want to have any idols, we should be worshiping and serving Him. But we want to identify if there's something in our life that can be considered an idol. Let's pray. Father, once again, we give you praise, honor, and glory for this privilege and opportunity to share your word this morning with your precious people. I pray that you think through my mind, speak through my mouth, that those who are here will be touched, edified, strengthened, and set free. We pray that revelation knowledge flow freely and that your word have free course in this place, free from satanic influence. We pray that every ear is an to hear and every heart is receptive to what your spirit would say unto them. Father, we desire right now the best gifts of the Spirit, that every need in this house will be met in a supernatural way. Help me to think clearly. Help me to speak intelligently, that those who are here will understand your word. We give you the praise, honor, and glory for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, all right. So again, we're continuing this series entitled Idolatry, What is Your Idol? We have three text scriptures that we want to look at this morning. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 through 6, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, and 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. And it reads as follows, you shall have no other gods. Somebody say, no other gods. No other gods. No other gods before me. You shall have. This is God speaking, obviously. You shall have. This is a command. No other gods before me. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. It says, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14, another direct command from Almighty God. He said, therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. And so we looked at this a couple weeks ago, and we said it was amazing how there's nothing new underneath the sun, and how the children of Israel, for everything God did for them, he brought them out of Egyptian bondage, he sent them to a promised land, the Bible said he fed them with manna in the morning, quail in the evening. He was their covenant God. He was their Jehovah Rapha. He was their Jehovah Jireh. He provided for them. He did so many amazing and miraculous things for them and throughout their lifetime. Yet the Bible says they still went after other gods. Yeah. They still sacrificed to demons. They still at some times they worshiped to Baal. They still sacrificed to ancestors and spirits. They sacrificed also to the God Molech, where they were putting their children on the altar and watch them burn to death. Yeah. And the Bible says, listen, there's nothing new underneath the sun. And so in this day and age, as Christians, we still watch, go after and worship idol God. Now, they don't look the same, but they're still prevalent today. And we said that the idols today aren't so much on the shelf, rather they're in the cell. Yeah. You follow me? Yes. So what is idolatry? We said idolatry is just the worship of idols. And we said in this day, there were six modern day idols that we wanted to look at these. Obviously, on all of them. But I believe these are the big ones. We said number one idol in today's world is technology. That's the computer. That's the internet. That's media. Number two is money. Somebody say money. money. That's the big one. Status and materialism. Praise the Lord. If I can digress just a little bit. Because many people argue that this is the biggest idol. We can see how this can really control the lives of believers and even non-Christians, especially here in America. We said it speaks to the need to impress, compare yourselves, your position or your status in life, or your possession with what other people have. Playing the comparison game, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Are you with me? Buying things you can't afford to impress people you don't like even anyway. Amen? Amen. See? Overworking to be rich. Sacrifices. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting to provide for your family, but when you sacrifice family, friends, when you sacrifice your integrity, when you sacrifice your relationship with God just to get more money, just to reach your professional goals, just to rise to the top of the corporate ladder, just to make a name for yourself. How do you know that's an idol? And we said before that God hasn't called us to be famous. He's called us to be faithful. See, we're not here to make a name for ourselves. We're here to make his name great. See, God will make you a name, He'll bless you. But if you're not careful, your career goals, your aspirations in life, your drive even, can become an idol. Your ambition can become an idol. We said that this also speaks to the obsessive need for more money. You're never content. You're never satisfied. See, your house ain't big enough. Your car isn't nice enough. So you never have enough money. You never have enough clothes. There's never a point in your life where there's a godly state of contentment. And how many know the Bible says godliness with contentment is great game? Amen. Now, this is why you all want to better yourself. There's nothing wrong with whether to move up in life, but how many know there's balance? Amen. See, God comes first, the Bible says, 
in Matthew 6, 33, seek you first. Somebody say first. first. Not your career. Not to have a husband. Not to have a wife. Not to have make six figures. Not to become a millionaire. Not to become a CEO of the company. Yes. Not to start your own business yes. one day. Not to just have that house behind a white picket fence. Not to run to the top of the corporate ladder where the Bible says, yes. seek first the kingdom of God. He didn't say second or third, and he didn't say only. Yes. There's nothing wrong with having goals. There's nothing wrong with having aspirations. But you have to realize where it falls in the pecking order. Yes. The Bible says God comes first. Let everything else find his place. Yes. Or else it can become an idol. Not having enough money to tithe. Not having enough money to give generously to, to the kingdom of God. See? Money, status, materialism also involve lying, cheating, and stealing just to gain a financial advantage. Yeah. And it also involves you allowing, get this now, money. Oh my God. Oh my God. I want to say it. Allow money to become your functional savior. And that's the sad thing. When you trust in your job, yeah. more you trust in God. Yeah. When you trust in your boss, yeah. more than you trust in God. When you trust what's in your bank account, yeah. and yes. in your 401k, yes. in your money market account, more than you trust in God. Let me tell you what, that is a dangerous place to be in because guess what happened? God will just removed his hand from you. And then all of a sudden you walk into the job. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ask me how I know. And they tell you the company is going bankrupt. When you walk into a job and they give you a picture. When you go through a, a bad economic downturn like you did several years ago. When you lose money in your 401k. When you lose money in your money market account. When you move, lose money in all of your investment accounts. Then you realize that Father, I stretch my hand to you. Only you I help I know. See? That in Christ you saw the rock. I said all of the ground is sinking. I don't care how secure you think your job is. I don't care how, many, how much money you have. You can lose it all in a moment. Yeah. I had family members. Yeah. They were in the hospital. How many know one hospital sick could flee you out? Yes. Had family members in the hospital. And they thought they were going in for a week or two. Or a day or two. And then it was prolonged. Had a family member looked at the bill. They were in the hospital over a million, uh, uh, for a month, it was over a million dollars. Over a million dollars. You better learn how to trust God. You better not trust, learn how to not trust in your finance or your job or your boss. We have to learn how to trust God. Amen. Because here's the thing your job, your boss, your status at work, your position at work, oh my God, can't become an idol. You think you're sitting pretty, you think you're all comfortable, come on, and then they tell you, you know, I don't know. You got all the, you got all the education in the world, come you have all the degrees, you have more degrees than the thermometer, and then all of a sudden you think you're good to go. They say, you know, I think you're overqualified. In fact, you got too much degree. We don't even want to pay you anymore. I pay somebody younger. Wow. See? Or you're in a secure job, and we've been here before, yeah. and then you get a new boss, and you're not even to bring all his people. And then you didn't do anything wrong. Now you want to move you out. You better learn to trust God. See? Because listen, when you trust God, you say, guess what? It's okay. You walk out there praising God. You know, when one door closes, I know my God is able. When one door closes, another door will open. Promotion doesn't come from the east. Promotion doesn't come from the west. But promotion comes from God. He'll raise up one. He'll step down another. My God is able. I trust in God. Not an idol. My boss is not an idol. The money I have, my possession is not my God. God comes first. So you can't allow money, status, or your position, your education, whatever the case may be, to become an idol. And so today, now we, we touched on this with technology. We're going to talk about TV. Some of the TV. TV. Pastor, you, you mean television? Yes. Can become an idol? Yes. Well, let's let's see. Let's talk about it. Come on. All right, now. How many of you memorize the entire the entirety or parts of the twenty third psalm? Anybody? You know some parts? Yes. Or maybe the whole almost the whole psalms. Twenty three. You know. You know. You learn in Sunday school and parents yeah. growing up. Yeah. Probably you learn any verse in the Bible. One you probably learned was the 23rd Psalm, right? 
I know I'm setting you up right. <laughs> so let's look at the 23rd song. You ready? Okay, let's see if this is the way you memorize it. Come on. Alright, what's the 23rd song? Come on, Pat. <laughs> is it up here? Come on. Let's go to the next one. We can come back now. Let's go to the next one, brother. I'm happy. That's okay. Alright, here, 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 here. The TV set is my shepherd. My spiritual growth shall not want. It made me sit down and do nothing for his name's sake. Because it requires me all my spare time. It keepeth me from doing my duty as a Christian. Because it presents so many good souls that I must see. It restores my knowledge of the things of the world. And keepeth me from the study of God's word. It leads me in the path of failing to attend the evening worship services and doing nothing in the kingdom of God. Yea, though I live to be a hundred, I shall keep on viewing television as long as it will work. For it is my closest companion. Its town and its picture, they comfort me. It presented entertainment before me and keepeth me from doing important things with my family. It fills my head with ideas which differs from those set forth in the word of God. Surely no good thing will come of my life because my television offers me no good time to do the will of God. Thus, I will dwell crownless in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. 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 That's the 23rd song. Wow. Oh, today. Amen. Isn't it so true? Yes, yes. That we're not careful. The TV. The TV. The hell of it, I mean, the television yeah. can become an idol. The verse was up here in Psalm 103, 101, verse 3. This is David. He said, I put nothing wicked before in front of my eyes. I hate what unfaithful people do. Yeah. I want no part of it. I put no wicked thing in front of my eyes. I remember Joel said this one. He said, I've made a covenant with my eyes. So you have to be careful. How many of you know the Bible says, in the world, there's lust of the flesh. That's the eye of life. Now you have to understand, we talked at length about how much time people, not you, but your friends, spend on the cell phone. But really, when you talk about TV becoming an idol, it's, it's not just because of the amount of TV that we watch, watch, but it's also because of the kinds of things that we watch yeah. on TV. Now, how many of you know that sin enters our heart one of two ways, through your eye gates yeah. or through your ear gates? Yeah. And so, sin enters your heart that way. Are you following me? And so, we know that the Bible says we have it up here in Proverbs 4.23. He tells us to guard our heart. Yeah. Get this. See, you can't be slack about it now. To guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. In other words, your life is based upon the kind of heart you have. Now, one translation says, guard your thoughts yeah. with all diligence. So you have to guard what goes through your eye gates. You have to guard what goes through your air gates as well. You can't be slack about it. You have to become intentional or mess up your heart. Yes. See? Now, years ago, uh, Billy Graham, he once reported, get this out, the results of a survey that found the viewing habits of Christians and non-Christians are pretty much the same. We spend the same amount of time in front of the TV, get this, and we watch the same shows. The exact same shows. See? Forget about how the Bible says that we're not be conformed to this world. See? But we pretty much do the same thing. Now, only 700 people, it's been said, writers, producers, and actors, they produce 75% of all the TV program. Only about 700 people. Now, keep in mind, you do know these are Christian spirit filled people. Yeah. Now, according to a recent survey, say 86% of them sell them or they never turn ship a tent church. These are the people who are making our programs. These are the people who are making programs for us. And notice this, they're essentially indoctrinating us with programs that they feel that we need to see. 84% of them say government should make no laws regarding sex. 95% of them believe homosexuality is not wrong. Yeah. Pastor, don't talk about that. That's a hot button. Come on, we, we gotta talk about it. We gotta church. Right. There you go. There you go. Since when does it mean that if we 
disagree with someone, we don't love them. Love me, we can disagree. Pastor, you don't love gays and lesbians. I love everybody. Yes. See? But love me, and I can also disagree with that. And listen, I'll put the point in front of I'm just as bad. If I want to be a fornicator, if I want to be a homemaker, I'm just as bad as anybody else. See, we'll, we'll sleep with someone of the same sex. So, all of these programmers, they believe that homosexuality is not wrong. We have to understand that these shows, get this out, they reshape our thinking about things going on in the world today. These TV shows and commercials, hear me, yes. become a method on controlling the narrative of many issues going on in society today. You see, what happens is we watch these shows over and over again, and now the things we used to call sin to us is not so bad anymore because everyone else is doing it. You know, years ago, these have more like shows, you know, like the Cosby show and all these great bunch, and they had married people in the show. Married couples, people who are joined under the union of, of the covenant of a marriage. Nowadays, all the shows have people who are together, they just live together. Yeah. So now, what do we start thinking? Why do our kids start thinking? We think, well, listen, we don't got to honor the marriage anymore. We don't got to get married anymore. Just live with each other. Have casual sex. Everybody's doing it, when in fact, everyone isn't doing it, but the TV, the television shows, make you feel that everyone else is doing it. And it's okay. And it's becomes kind of productive. Even the world, get this out. Even the world has enough sense. Hear me? To rate certain movies, realize that they feel some content isn't really acceptable for certain groups of people. Even they have enough sense to know this. Now, my question to you is are we going to trust how they rate our shows? Are we going to trust? them on how and what shows we should look at, or are we going to go to the Word? Yeah. Are we going to trust the Holy Spirit? They say, say a certain kid can't watch unless they're 17. I argue certain shows should be watched ever. Yeah. You follow me? All right, y'all, y'all believe I'm, I'm going to prove it. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, now. So, Pastor, how do you know? How do I know the TVs are coming out? How do I know that I'm starting to walk worship at the altar of the temples? Number one, you repeatedly miss church. You repeatedly miss church to watch your favorite show. Come on. See? Come on. You, got, you, you can't go to church. Like we said earlier, you know, you know, you ain't coming to evening service. Because all the good shows come on prime time. Watch out, man. Now some of y'all got sophisticated, well, I just go ahead and I, I record it, you know. <laughs> watch it when I get back. But sometimes we still have other excuses as well. But a lot of times, this character, it's been said a couple of shows. I remember a buddy of mine, who, I think when 24 came out, when Scandal came out, and everybody, oh, yeah. they said, man, you had churches in there. Because everyone wanted to watch. Empire came out. Come on, y'all know those shows. Churches were empty. Now we'll sit in front of the TV for an hour, but we won't bring ourselves to the house of God and learn about the word for an hour. All right? When hell is in large percent, people going to hell in a handbasket. When the world's grown more and more corrupt, and we're asleep at the wheel. Yeah. See? When people need a dying world out there, who need the message of Christ, and we're in front of the TV, and we 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 can't get we'll consistently we will consistently watch a show, but we won't consistently come to the house of God. And if we don't come, the world ain't coming. Yeah. And we are the body of Christ. Yeah. And members of the individual, we are God's hands. We are God's feet. We are God's voice. We are earth. God has no spark in time. being indoctrinated. And we get home and we from work and we're tired. And we sit in front of the TV for hours. Yep. Yep. And we make every effort to go to work and sometimes we have second and third jobs but when we're not working we can't press our way and push our way to the house of God to learn about the God who saved us. Yes. Yes. So we repeatedly miss our miss church to watch our favorite show. Come on, Pastor. Number two. All, all the parents, listen up. Your children's grades are slipping because of their time in front of the TV. Now, history shows that as kids watch more TV, and when cable TV came on the scene, they tracked that that was a time where children's SAT, ACT, and standardized test scores began to drop. Yeah. Don't tell me it doesn't have an effect. Yeah. Our kids can read. 
How you doing? I know because I talked to them. I have kids. They, high school kids can barely write, hear me now, a complete sentence. Now, they can text now. <laughs> but they can't write a complete sentence. And you know, you know how it is when you've got a 17 year old and he can't spell the, and he can't spell uh, a terminal, he can't spell house. That's embarrassing. Yeah. He know every line of the rap song. Okay? Oh he know everything that's going on on the TV now. And I told you before, how in the world are they going to come? Listen, these kids ain't getting out to house. Some of them, they ain't getting out to house. Because this is what they're talking about. I can't wait till they graduate. They ain't going nowhere. Because listen, they're not going to be able to be gainfully employed. They ain't learning anything. They ain't know about video games. They ain't know about technology. They ain't know about cell phones. They ain't know about the TV show. But they don't know about the things they need to make it in this world. Please, Pastor. Pastor, why you say, I know parents who have 40 year old children look, still living at home. 40 years old. See? Carol does real estate. Now they have multi-generational homes. And what? Yeah. They, they're building a home bigger. Multi-generational. Because they realize these kids ain't leaving. <laughs> so you got two and three generations of kids. The family living in the same home. Am I right about it? Multi-generational. See? Parents and y'all, you know, retirement age, you ain't trying to downsize. You got to upsize. People, they retire, they used to downsize a little bit. And they travel, you know, they, they yeah. got a big house, they downsize something a little smaller. No, you upsize it now. Because a lot of times, it's the television. Number three, you watch more TV. As you watch more TV, you spend less and less time in prayer. Less and less time in the Word of God. Our, our prayer life is suffering. Our knowledge of the word is suffering. We can't put two scriptures together. But we know what's happening on the latest show. We know what's happening on TV. Come on now. Number four. Your walk with God is clearly, is clearly suffering. As your time in front of the TV increases. Number five, you ignore, <laughs> you ignore people who try to talk to you during your favorite show. Watch out. I had a family member. And they love the souls. And I remember I was like, hey, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever, all right, whatever, whatever. And I thought I'd play a trick on them. I said, hey, I'm going to jump off the bridge. Okay, all right, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I'm going to murder someone, to kill someone. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's how you know. That's how you know. Come on, guys. And they say the soap opera while I'm on here is a soft form. Of pornography. I, we get into this. Yes. So much. And you can't miss. Because you know, Julie, going, going, God would rob now. I gotta figure out what's gonna happen in that relationship. You can't miss. Okay, look at this. <laughs> you know people, by first name basis, you don't know the people name in church, you know the people on the soul. Okay. Hallelujah. Come on. It's been idle if we get addicted to violent movies or pornography. Number seven, it's not when you regularly binge watch TV. What is that? You sit in front of TV for about five, eight hours at a time. Oh. Days at a time. Number eight, your cable or streaming bill is out of balance with your monthly, monthly budget. Number nine, you have to change. Uh oh, here, here's this. Listen. Come on now. This is how you know. This is how you know. <laughs> you have to change the channel every time someone walks in the room while you watch TV. You got to change the channel. You don't want them to see that. What you have to do. Now, I told you before, you know, years ago, because it's very subtle. Again, we do know that Satan doesn't come to you in a red suit and pitch for it. Come on now. He taxes you in the arena of your thought life. He's very subtle. And you got to really watch yourself. And I told you years ago how we're going to talk about sports a little bit, but, you know, watching games on TV used to be an idol for me. Now, not just regular games, but if it was the NBA championship game or the Super Bowl, and we had church that night, I got to understand. <laughs> I was going. Home. I remember years ago we had a revival on. Oh my God, we had a revival, and you know I was going to church. I had a choice. I had to go Sunday, and you know during the week. And then my dad had a rule. He said, "Now during revival, now, now back in the day, you have to understand it wasn't like revivals of the day. We oh, connect gosh. revivals. Yes. We got it like a, yeah, a small miniature revival. We, today's revival was like maybe one or two days, and we got we tired pretty well. Back in the day, it was five nights and twice a week. Okay. Five night revival. Right. Hey, 
know, you got school the next day. You know, you brought your homework to school. Okay? And listen, those preachers wouldn't feel bad for you. You had to get up to school like 6 30 the next morning. We got out at 11 30 at midnight on a Tuesday night. And they shot out on the heart. And no one like, I, I gotta get to school. They ain't worried about you. You better get this word, boy. Five night revival. My dad had a rule. He said, we had a revival. Listen. You, we already go every Sunday. We go during the week. Out of five nights, you better make three. You got to make three. Minimum yeah, three. That was a good time. And I remember this one time, it was a revival going on, and the Chicago Bulls were playing. Oh, yeah. Michael Jordan in his prime. Oh, in prime. Oh, yeah. He is in his prime. <laughs> and I think he made a play against Magic Johnson. Oh. And I saw my God. And they were playing that. I did not want to go to church. <laughs> I don't, I, matter of fact, I think, I, I think that was the night I took off. You know, most two nights I had off, and then the Spirit of God directed me. As a young boy. Let me tell you what, even as a young boy, as a teenager, as a child, the Spirit of God would start dealing with you. See? Because if you're not careful, some of the same problems you have as an a, a, a adolescent and a teenager, he'll follow you to your adult years. The Spirit of God dealt with me and said, you know, like, look, look at you, look at you. And I was already sick. You skipping church to watch the game. Come on now. To watch the game, to watch TV. Who knows what God could have done that night? Yeah. Come on now. My life could have never been the same. Yeah. Who knows the word from the Lord I missed that night? Yeah. 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 We know that one word from God yeah. will change yeah. your life forever. Yeah. Yeah. But I had to watch that show. Hallelujah. Then I made a conscious willful decision. I said, I'll never let TV. I don't care who it is. Michael Jordan ain't doing nothing for me. Yeah, yeah. I just jumped here. I got this money. He ain't donating no money to me. He ain't yeah, donating no money. Yeah. He ain't donating no money to the church. He ain't paying any of my bills. God's blessed right. him for what you're doing. Thank God for what you're doing. He ain't helping me. And, and, he ain't helping me. And you don't have Michael Jordan, Benny Johnson, or John Dean. You don't have a heaven. Oh, hell, don't put me in either. Why in the world am I putting them above God? I'm not telling you that sometimes you can't watch TV. I'm not telling you you got to go to church nine days a week. But I'm just saying, you have to know within yourself whether or not something is becoming an idol. And I knew the only reason I didn't go to church was because I wanted to watch the game. Yeah. Yeah. You got preachers all across the country. They feel the pressure to hurry up and finish their sermon, especially during football season. People want to go and watch the game. Yeah. And some people, truth be told, don't even come anymore. Yes, come on now. Very football season. Yes. And so I said, no, I'm not going to do this. And I remember I was at home. And it wasn't easy. Come on. But Mike was dribbling down the court. Yeah. And just to let the devil know I was in control, I said, turn it right off. Come on now. I'm going to bed. Fucking a mind like, you're going miss this, you're miss this. The good part of it, though. I said, no, I'm, I'm going to let the devil know right now. I'm going to prove to myself that I'm in control. This TV, this, this TV is in control. See, I'm in control. Yeah. And Paul I put on my life. I bring it under subjection. I bring my eyes, my, de my desires, my, my choices, my behavior under subjection. So it won't become an idol within my life. We have to understand this. Look at this Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. This is what the word says. He says, finally, brethren, whatever things here is. Now, this, this is what we do when we're watching things. It's not the amount of time we watch, but it's also the things, it's what we watch. So he says, whatever things are true, oh my God, whatever things are noble. Yes. Whatever things are just, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, think or meditate on these things. Again, you've got to guard your heart with all diligence. Diligence. You've got to guard your heart. I can't sit and watch pornography all day long. I could. I heard they have sex trafficking, human trafficking. And oh, by the way, if you think it's harmless, the single most characteristics behind people who are serial rapists. Yep. One common thread. All of them have. They all watch a whole lot of pornography. Don't tell me the things you watch, the things you allow consistent with your eye gates and your ear gates does not affect you. It's going to affect your marriage life too. Nothing's going to give them good enough. It's going to affect you when you deal with the opposite sex and the same sex. Come on now. So the Bible says meditate on these things. Get this. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And here's the thing. Faith comes as you hear the word of God, but really faith for anything comes that way. 
You start to believe whatever you consistently hear. If you consistently hear the word, now that's the value of Christian television. Listen to the word preach. That's why you need to support those who have good, clean shows and broadcasts, and also those who proclaim the gospel. I know a lot of people, you know, they try to you know, get a lot of money out of you, but it costs a lot of money too. But that's the value behind listening to the word, radio and TV and hearing the word. I don't know about you, but I had several times where God spoke to me through a television show. Yeah. A preacher yeah. was preaching the gospel. I had the Lord speak to me a couple times. Yeah. I was thankful, I was grateful that they had that as an option for me on my television. So the Bible says faith come by hearing. Now here's the thing. If you consistently hear that sin is okay, if you consistently hear that casual sex is fine, if you consistently hear that you don't have to go to church, you start to believe it. So when we listen to these shows, and they indoctrinate us, they send messages to us when you consistently hear, oh, I'm not telling you what to do now. Drop your stones. I'm not telling you what to do, but what I'm telling you is it does have an effect on you. You follow me? Yeah. Because whatever you consistently hear, you will eventually believe, and what you eventually believe will show up in your actions. Look at this. In 1 John 4 1. He says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test. Somebody say test. Test. Test the spirits. Whether they have God. Because there are many false prophets. Have gone out to the world. Amen. So you have to test people. And I would suggest to you, you need to test. Every show. How does it make me feel after you get through? I do the same thing with music, you know? How does it make music make me feel? How, what does it motivate me to do after I listen to it? The shows are the same way. You gotta test every show. Now you know the thing about it is it's interesting because we will monitor what we put in our body. Oh, I ain't that bastard. I I I need organic. I eat organic food. I do that. Oh, I need to have certain vegetables. Or certain foods you got. It's amazing. Some of us we start, you know, when the doctor scares, we watch what we put in our body. Right? Yeah. See? We're very particular about what we eat. Especially when we have a health scare. Yeah. But it's amazing. We won't monitor what we put in our eye gates the same way. We won't monitor what we put in our ear gates the same way. It's like that we would, and we'd be bored. Like, I ain't eating that. No, no. You know, we got sophisticated. I ain't eating swine. You know, it's not even pork anymore. I ain't eating swine. You know, <laughs> we get a lot particular about certain foods. Now, listen. <laughs> I'm not about that. We got to be balanced. But there's certain things we don't eat. And we'll pay more for better quality food. But it's amazing. We won't do the same thing for our spirit. Yeah. yeah. We won't do the same thing for our heart. Yeah. We put all the garbage in our heart. We put all the garbage in our spirit. And wonder why we're not spiritual times. Mm. And we wonder why certain behaviors show up in our lives. And wonder where it came from. We put garbage in our heart and our mind. Yes. Wonder why we can't be faithful. Wonder why we can't be selling a ton of your Wonder why we can't keep and remain faithful to our God. Wonder why we keep cursing all the time every time people push our button because every show we look at, all they do is curse. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm not telling you what to do. But what I am telling you is we have to guard our heart and our thoughts with all diligence because I'm telling you, listen, God is a heart God. Man looks on the outward of here, but God is looking at your heart. Faith is birth in the heart. So I'm telling you, I'm suggesting that you monitor. I'm not telling you what to do, but you monitor what you put in your spirit. Yes. What you allow to come through your eye gates yes. and your ear. Now somebody says, well, Pastor Shep, I can't watch anything. Hey, no, I'm not telling you that. Yes, come on. I like entertainment. But here's the thing. You know our biggest problem? I'm almost done. We have terrible options out here. Yes. Terrible options. And we don't have it. That's why we need Christians in the movie industry. We need Christian producers. We need Christians who produce television programs. We got to do it. I was almost done. I'll give you four reasons. Four reasons. I'm say four reasons. Four reasons. Four reasons. Why you should consider. 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 I want you to consider rethinking watching a particular show on TV. Just consider. I want you to rethink watching certain shows. Number one, if it presents violence as a legitimate way of achieving goals, you may want to rethink watching it or how much you watch it. Okay? Just consider. If the show approves adultery, homosexuality, or sex before marriage, either directly or by implication, you may want to rethink whether you want to watch the show. 
Number three, if it reflects a negative attitude toward the singleness of family and fidelity in marriage, you may want to rethink watching that show. Number four, if it minimizes the seriousness of such sins as murder, dishonesty, greed, lust, profanity, and immorality, you may want to consider not watching that show. You know what's amazing? Some of us, if we go to a store, a vendor, and we have bad customer service, or they don't do us right, we get all upset and say, I ain't never stopping yep. for moment. Yep. I'm not giving them my business. I ain't coming back in. Yep. Yeah. Why not do the same thing if we are offended by a certain TV show? Yeah. You know the only way you can say, and I can say, these shows are bad all day long. The only thing, the only thing you really can do to affect change, stop watching. Yeah. <laughs> affect their ratings. If the ratings are high, that's that's something we can do. Yeah. It's not, and in a sense, we're playing about it, okay? Oh, I can't believe it, but you know, because certain shows have shock value, and it's so bad, you always want to watch. Like the world's going on. See, but the only way, you know, is not to complain and say I can't believe what they put on TV. The best way to do it, don't talk, just stop watching. Amen. Could affect the ratings. If the ratings drop, they'll get pulled. So get pulled. But we keep them on TV because we do what? We watch it. All right. Now, I'm going to say something close. I'm going to show you the power. If you're not convinced, maybe this is a Because it does affect our actions and our behavior. How many remember years ago, uh, the Columbine shooting? Yeah. The King was just coming, came in. All black. Long overcoats. Shotguns. They killed innocent children. Innocent children. The same thing happens today. And some of you know that these men who came and these young boys, really, they were inspired. They were influenced by the movie Natural Born Killer. They watched that movie. They said, wow. How would you do it? See, they were inspired. And in the movie Natural Born Killer, guess what they did? They came in in black overcoats. They played in with shotguns. And they came and shot everybody. And they said they pretty much mimicked what they saw on TV. I said, it absolutely affects your behavior and your decisions. I didn't say this here, but they did a study. Because some people believe facts and data and scientists and psychologists before they believe God. I know that. But there was a psychologist who did a study years ago to study the behavior of people as they watched more threats of violence. And they saw that when they tracked TV programming through the years, and as the level of violence increased on TV, they noticed in society the level of bias, violence increased in society. You have more deaths and more murders as there were more images of TV. Oh, you didn't hear me today. On, on all the images on TV, as they increased, the murder and death rate increased as well. And he said he believed, he believed that it impacted our choices because of what we see and what we hear. That's Christian, we have to honor for this. We can't allow it to dominate our thing. We can't allow it to change who we are. We can't allow it to get this to contaminate our heart. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we have to do this. It's been said, and this is a little extreme on the other end of the spectrum. I'll tell you what the man of God, Smith Wigglesworth, he was arguably one of the greatest men that ever lived. Um, he raised over 17 people from the dead. Just awesome ministry, science, wonders, miracles. You know what, now granted, this is, um, you know, you may think this is a little extreme. Yes, I said, he read both the book of the Bible. He read both the book of the Bible. And there were certain things he would never put in his spirit, his ideas, his theory. And he was a spiritual giant. A spiritual giant. So I wonder what will happen to us if we're become, we become intentional about what we see on TV. I wonder what will happen to our children. And sometimes, I'm going to say this, sometimes we, get, we wonder why our children have certain attitudes. No. Yeah. You wonder where they get it from. Where, where, where they pick it up from? I'll tell you where they pick it up from. They pick it up from school, other kids, and they all pick it up from TV. Man, F you and F this. Where they hear They're on TV. <laughs> So much disobedience, no. yeah. so much insubordination. Where did you get it from? TV. 
Watch this show the other day, and we, we you know you know the mean girls and everything. And you, you you got the manifestation of that sometimes with our children. But it's what they watch on TV. It's what they're putting in their spirit, what they're putting through their eyes and their ear gates. And so we're not careful as a church. We can't allow them to become an idol. We have to be everything God calls us to be. And that means becoming intentional. And listen, as I said, and, and monitoring what goes in our heart. Monitoring what goes in our mind. Monitoring the people, the producers we will listen to and learn from and listen to and, and, and hear from. Realizing that this person who's produced this program may not have my best spiritual interest at heart. Amen. Amen. So you have to do this moving forward. All right, rest of your feet. Praise the Lord.